Hi, everybody. This is Jim Cornette, pro wrestling legend, and you're listening to the Book in the Territory Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast. This is the artist formerly known as Daryl Van Horn, James Mitchell, the Sinister Minister, and I'm here to let you know I would rather slam my cock in a car door than to miss the dulcet tones of Hard Body Harper, my illegitimate son on Booking the Territory podcast. <laughs> Oh, messy! This is professional wrestler Jimmy Vine, the Boogie Woogie Man. Tell my people, and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss booking the territory. Oh yeah! This is a one-man gang. You're listening to Booking the Territory Pro Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of Booking the Territory, the Unprofessional Wrestling Podcast, where today we are covering WCW Saturday Night on TBS from August the 15th of 1992. If you are listening to us on YouTube, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and please leave a comment about the episode. Those pesky algorithms like that type of stuff, and it really does help the show grow. Harper also won't cut a promo on you if you, uh, if you mention that. Doc, it is just you and I. We made the announcement last week based on the scheduling and stuff we're moving around this week. Uh, how are you? Welcome to the show. Um, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm doing great as always. I'm happy to be here. Blessed, blessed and blessings uh, abound. Um, you know, we talked about this last week on the show where we're still having to move a few things around. Uh, I, I'll, I'll fall on the sword here for everyone, you know. Before we were accommodating some of your situations that you've spoken about, and, and we've all, uh, you know, put our thoughts and prayers towards the uh, Menace family uh, as y'all go through difficult times. Uh, this one's on me. We have some some youth soccer that's getting in the way, and we made the executive decision at our annual strategic planning session that we would have Harper for the clash if we could, rather than a, a, a Saturday night episode. So that's what we're doing here. Um, we've made that decision, so we hope all of our good patrons out there are uh, uh, aligned, uh, vertically aligned with the decision making. Um, so I got a couple of things that I'd like to flip and dive around uh, as we get started, if you don't mind, before you and I just uh, crack open this episode. Shocking that you have flips and dives. Shocking that you have flips and dives. But hey, can I say one thing before you th throw to a flip and dive? It, it won't take long at all. Just a quick uh, mention. Uh, of course, of course you can. This is our show, buddy. This is our this time is, together. This is our space, right? It's our space to explore our feelings <laughs> together. Uh, no, real quick. By the time you listen to this on the free feed, I I would have already dropped an AI Bill Watts. And AI Jim Ross episode number two on the Patreon feed. So if you're not a patron, uh, you heard last week's you know freebie that I threw out there a month after it originally aired. There is an episode two that is already up on Patreon at tinyurlcom BTT. Along with that, you can get all of our Dark Side of the Ring reviews, our Tales from the Territory reviews, World Class reviews, NWA Power shows. ECW shows, all of that available on Patreon, along with Doc mentioned the Clash a second ago. We got Clash 20 coming up, not far off in the near future, and that is a monumental one, and we'll talk about that when we get there. We're going to maybe talk about Bruno on this show finally, and Darren will be happy. Tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. All of the WCW Clashes and pay-per-views that we've done are available there. All right, Doc, you said you got a little flip and dive, so uh, let's well, hear it. Here's the thing. I I think I know what you're talking about but because we're in the dark period for me. I, I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen at this clash. I haven't watched it. I don't know. So I'm kind of uh, waiting to see what you're talking about there. Um, also, I just say, hey, you know, um, I, I, I happen to be on the one of the digital social social platforms this past week hunting around for some stuff. And I saw we had an, a new uh, somebody who signed up to be a patron. And they were commenting at just how great it was and how much content there is. 
and just say, hey, I don't remember their name. I would say it if I did. I'm not withholding it, but just, hey, thanks. Uh, and if you're not a patron, we, we've designed this so that it would be worth your, your, your money each month. All right. Let's let's have a little flip and or dive. Hey, um, real quick, real quick. That's Rich. That's a uh, Rich Rich Buras. He signed up recently. Um, okay, I'm glad thanks, you said that because he is the one new patron that uh that uh signed up in the last day and a half since we did the last show. But proceed with okay. your flip and dive. No, thanks, Rich. Appreciate. Thanks, you. Rich. Appreciate appreciate all the patrons out there. Um, you know, in 2024, we'd like to express our gratitude more often. And it's a year of gratitude. This is the season of gratitude. No, I'm kidding. Um, all right. Here's a question for you. Um, so it's a week later from the last time our people have heard us, but it is two and a half days, three days since we last spoke. And so in real time, the the Cowboys still haven't played the Packers. When you hear this, I'm, I may be prepping for ecstasy or already in a cooler somewhere waiting to be discovered at a Burger King near you. But I have a question that I'd like to bring up in that you and I have had a long football debate about the effects of cold weather in the playoffs. Just to get everybody level set, I still think it's a thing. You think it's highly overrated. I don't think it's as a thing as you think I think it is. I think that's right. But I think there's times when it's going to be a problem. And so this weekend is one of those times where I think the weather is going to be an issue. Uh, If you live in America, you will remember uh, in the second week of January, uh, a Arctic front that, that came down the middle of the country. Mike, we're sending the poor Miami Dolphins straight from Miami Beach to the heartland of America to play the Kansas City Chiefs, where the wind chill is expected to be negative 30. Is that going to affect Tyreek Hill, Tua Tagliavola, and the rest of the Miami Dolphins? Yes, and it's also going to affect Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs offense, which has not really been good this year. I agree. When it gets that cold, it's kind of like playing in, in six inches of snow. You see those games where it's clear field and then it's six inches. You, you've got to adapt to the situation. But my question is, so I look, I did some looking, and, and it's going to be at 77, 79 degrees in Miami that day. That puts your heat index probably somewhere 88, 89. You're looking at almost 120 degrees difference in, in wind chill heat index. W- what do you think this does to Miami going into the game? First off, you you are so you are the worst with this conversation because you 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 conveniently always throw out you love making a point about things that support your argument, but then when things that don't support your argument are thrown out there, you just conveniently ignore them. Look up how many games the Packers have lost in January, in the playoffs, in Green Bay. And that is one of the most hostile places you can play. I believe in re- in, since 2001, I may be a game or two off here, but they've got six or seven losses at home. Multiple times they were the one seed. Some of those losses are against Atlanta, a dome team. They lost to Michael Vick in a wild card round. They lost to Minnesota another dome team. They lost to San Francisco multiple times, which is not necessarily a cold weather city. And home. kind of in the snow one time, I think. Um, No, I it, that one game wasn't in the snow, but it was like the temperature is going to be this weekend. Very, It was very much single digits. Um, I believe that was the, one of the Kaepernick teams that uh, rolled into to Green Bay and won. And they've lost to 
the Giants multiple times. One of those was a single-digit game as well uh, in Green Bay. Now, you can say, well, the Giants play in New York. Okay, it's not the frozen tundra. My point being is you – this is why you drive me nuts with this argument. You completely ignore those facts. I'm going to give another one to you because I know there's no way you'll remember this. Back in 1996, in the AFC Divisional Playoffs, Indianapolis went to Kansas City in cold weather and won. Now, um, I'm not saying that another team like Miami is going to win this weekend in KC because at the end of the day, usually in the playoffs especially, uh, uh, the team on the that's traveling is not the better team. That's why they're traveling. That's another thing people inconveniently seem to forget when we talk about these things. That said, I think the thing that no one wants to talk about when we're talking about these teams playing in cold weather is, do you, especially in the case of the Packers, because I feel like this is one thing that impacts them that no one says. I, you'll hear these analysts back when Rodgers was doing his thing like, nobody wants to go to Green Bay and play that team. I personally believe that if you have a high-powered offense, even though you're at home and you're quote-unquote used to playing in the elements, I think once you get into them single digits and them wind chills are in the negatives, I think your high-powered offense is stymied just as much as anything that that other team's going to do because y'all both got to be out there in those same damn elements. Nobody wants to play in that. Don't let these home teams tell you, oh, yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. They, they don't want to play in that shit no more than, no more than the, the, the away team does. So that's why I think the conversation always is overrated when we talk about these teams that play in cold weather and then, oh, we got a team that doesn't play in cold weather or is a dome team. I think it's an overrated conversation. And I point, I specifically point to that Green Bay example because – Bruh, can you imagine like the outrage? I mean, well, you can because you haven't been to an as of the recording on Jan- January 12th of this. You haven't been to an NFC championship game in a very long time. Can you imagine um, the outrage if if the Packer, if the if the Cowboys, I don't know how many home playoff losses they have since 01 in the last 23 years. But can you imagine if you had seven of them? I don't think y'all have had seven it, home playoff losses. It, it, That's it a, feels it feels like it, but I don't know for sure. That's but think about that. Sit, I know they got six for sure. I think it's seven home playoff losses <laughs> since the two thousands began. That's insane for everybody to always scream. Oh my God! Nobody wants to play in the frozen tundra. Well, apparently teams go there and win. Not not only one, it's not a one off, but it happened has happened often. And I think the weather like levels the playing field. And and in some cases, in the cases of San Fran going there in those two games that I'm thinking of. They had badass defenses. So their defenses were wrecking shit. And I really believe you get the combination of that cold weather, a high-powered Green Bay offense, and a defense that's already wrecking shit on an average day. Well, guess what? I think the cold weather in that example helps out the team with the defense. Because now you're fighting against the elements, even though you're quote-unquote are used to playing in it. So... It affects both teams. I, I just I think a, that can I ask a people, question? you can. I just uh, let me close. I think people overrate it a lot. Okay, so I'm not as on the far end of the other side of this argument as as you make me out to be. Oh, um, you are. Uh, thanks. You are. Um, okay. <laughs> I've I've also come to the opinion that at this time of year, that even as as much or more as the cold weather is for some teams, Miami really screwed themselves by not beating Buffalo in the last week of the season because going down to Miami this year and playing a game out in that humidity and heat is almost probably worse than playing in zero degrees because you're not used Uh. to that. And the humidity and the heat takes it out of you. The cold is nasty and it's hard to play in. And it's like, okay, the heat will dehydrate you, start cramps. It's a problem. And I think Miami almost has as much of an advantage the other way as the cold weather teams do. 
I Your think thoughts. we overrate the weather period too much when we talk about athletes, fine Christian athletes in the, the, uh-huh. the words of Stan Lane. I think we overrate the weather elements way too much when we're talking about athletes who are prime condition at in the peak of their you know sterile and strength i mean these are these are young dudes mostly who are in great physical condition and yet you get these analysts on tv talking about the weather and i'm just thinking to myself like it's it's you know how Cornette says lazy booking it's lazy like it is just lazy because they harp on it nonstop. Bro, let me let me ask you a question. How many how many of these football players growing up grew up playing in dome stadiums? Or like I mean, do do you think do you think these guys just all of a sudden wake up and are like, oh, I know I grew up playing in the elements my entire life? Because no high schools have domes. I grew up playing in the elements my entire life, whether it's in the heat or the cold. And now all of a sudden I got drafted to a team in South Florida. I don't know longer how to play in cold or I got drafted to a team. I'm from the South, but I'm I've played in New England now for for a couple of years. All of a sudden I'm great at playing in the cold. Bro, you you've experienced all the elements in your life generally. Like what? Why all of a sudden, at your peak physical condition, is now this completely affecting you? It's it's like like we talk about it way too much. It just I'm like, these guys are prime physical athletes. They're Christian athletes. Stan Lane, there. They they this doesn't make sense. They don't talk about that more than they talk about the X's and O's. And then it kills me when I'm watching like one of these shows and they all of a sudden they talk about the weather forever or a few minutes and then they go to the X's and O's and then they start making the the correct X's and O's points. It's like y'all just really need content to talk about, don't you? You just you just you just need some some bull crap. You just want to flip and dive like like these idiots in AEW do all the time. Okay, Uh-oh. I got it. That's what we're well, doing. Well, okay, so you mentioned AEW. Let me let me get another dive in here. People like to hear you and me be friends. So um, I don't want to talk about AEW. There's been a lot of stuff over the last couple of months. And to be frank, it all kind of bores me. Um, their whole situation bores me, to be honest. Um, yeah. We, we're coming up to you ain't the alone end in of that one. I'm sorry? Uh, no, I was just saying you're not alone in that one. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's we know. I mean, there's all the different podcasts. You have these guys on podcasts that don't agree about anything about wrestling. Yet, if you listen to a Bischoff and a Corny and and a couple other people, it's like, <laughs> look, we don't agree on the day of the what day of the week this is. But Tony Khan's messing this up. So anyway, we'll move on. Football season's closing to an end. We had the end of the uh, college football season. You know, you and I were like, dang, it's over. The NFL's rapidly coming to an end. Um, I don't know the exact date of when this will come out or when the Rumble is, but Rumble, the Rumble is on its way. And that starts, you know, mania season, WrestleMania season, um, which is usually, you know, the most, the best booking, the most interesting stories for WWE is they ramp to their big event. What are you going to do on Saturdays and Sundays now that football is coming to an end? What's your plan? Because we got to have a plan here. All of us in the Army have to have a plan because you don't want to just wander around in the world without a plan. Well, you I mean, XFL, XFL starts in March. But more oh, importantly, is that, is that uh, the new XFL, correct? Oh, the UFL. I'm sorry. I called it XFL. It's, it's the UFL now. I got I got a little heat over that, man, because they, they killed the New Orleans territory. <laughs> sure. But but, you know, we got the UFL. And I mean, look, our Dallas Renegades are or I'm sorry, Arlington Renegades are the returning champions. So, I mean, you got one strap this year or last year, Doc. 
Maybe the wrong team that plays in Arlington, but <laughs> they play, they literally play across the street from the Cowboys. I'm, I feel like that's the hardcore champion, and Bob Stoops, who's the coach, is going to get rolled up with a pen at the grocery store today, and we're going to lose it to some guy named Bill. No, there's plenty coming. You got March, you got the UFL, and then, you know, I told you, we got I got CFL at – kicks off in uh, early I'm June. toying with the idea of getting into the CFL this year you know for me it's not about I, I joke about the the quality of play but for me it really is about the, the ability to have time to watch um okay CFL you're going to be you're going to be starting to watch raw a little bit more or, or smackdown and getting getting primed for uh, mania season oh yeah I already did I've, I've been um I've been catching smackdown Okay. I mean, they, they they had some best of stuff, you know, because none of these companies, none of them are like BTT. They they all like to do best of stuff during these holidays. And, you know, BTT just keeps churning new content every week. Each week is a best of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, look, as of us recording this, the episode that actually aired this week was Harper's Kenny's Key West Rick Rude rant. Jesus. That's top five moment in this show history. And it just came out of nowhere. Right, right, right. Rick, Rick Rude looks like one of these asshole cokeheads at Kenny's Key West in the 90s. Like, bro, you have to explain that. And that and devolved into, into him explaining Kenny's Key West. And then we uncovered he used to oil up the wrestling broads <laughs> at Kenny's Key West. And he, that's when he became first became a manager. Him and his friend Randy. Hey Randy, if you're listening, boy, Randy's Randy's get, Randy's been getting a lot of stories on this show lately. We need to get Randy a booth at the next wrestling convention so he can sign some autographs. Yeah, make for a real. Money out of this thing. <laughs> I mean, Randy's mom is a star too. That time he locked his keys in the car, <laughs> he, he calls Randy's house and then mom is. But yeah, so yeah, where were we going with this? This is uh, so we, we got we, so football's ending, and that's a big deal for most of us. But hey, you're gonna have more football. You got I love the NBA. You hate it, but I'm gonna be knee deep in the NBA. Uh, I've got you know baseball starts in April, and we are on mania season. So I want everybody who's feeling a little you know anxious about football going away. I get it. We're there too, but. You know, we'll 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 get through this. We always do. Yeah, I told you, um, man. The, the end of college football is devastating. But nobody books the territory like the NFL. As I say that, I mean, no one. You know, by the time this airs, we'll we'll be should be about to the week of Super Bowl. Who knows what kind of flips and dives the NFL has pulled out in their booking? Oh, I mean, Jesus. we know it's coming. I mean, they they've got a script. And there, and, and but it may change based on things that happen. So I mean, that's why we watch. It's all good well, shit, pal. All good shit, pal. Twenty twenty four, bro. Um, you know, I, I I think I pulled a muscle on that last dive. So, uh, I mean, shit. I guess we've run out. The, we've been dribbling around, running out the clock. You want to talk about some classic wrestling? I mean, I think that's why we're here, right? Let's get into it. WCW Saturday Night on TBS from August the 15th of 1992. For the record, this week's show was taped August the 10th, 92 at Center Stage. And this is the first half of the taping from that day that we're going to see this particular week. Uh, As the show kicks off, I'm going to hit play. Uh, as we watch, Doc and I watch the video version. Ron Simmons uh, is in the CNN Center talking about what it means to be the world champion. Here it is. I've been speechless, and uh, this is almost one of them. But I can't tell you how proud I am. And first of all, I've got to pat myself on the back, if you don't mind, because I've waited for this opportunity to come along, and I'm proud of myself for when opportunity not being ready to answer. Now that's what I call a perfect fit. 
And believe me, it's going to take an act of Congress to get it off my waist. I've got the fever now, and if I got the backing from you, believe me, Ron Simmons will be the people's champion. I couldn't have done it without you. I thank you for staying behind me, and believe me, I promise you, I will do everything in my power to represent this belt and to represent you like your champion should. Thank you. I, I give Watts a lot of stuff on this show, and you know, you, we've kicked him in the shins a lot. Uh, d- making Ron Simmons the world champion, I got no complaints. None. It wasn't like they just threw a rocket, stra- you know, strapped a rocket to him. He's been here for a while and um, many years, and I, I, I got no problem. So, I, and I thought that was a cool little TNN Center segment that they showed at the beginning of the show. Uh, I, any thoughts on the on the opening doc? Yeah, I really like that, and I, it gave me some thoughts because I. He was really good in that, and he's not going to be, you know, Ric Flair, CM Punk, but you don't have to be. You don't have to be, especially back then. Now, you can't be Sting, but you don't have to be the best. And I think he's better when he's interact. It feels like he's interacting with people than when he's standing there like Steamboat is right now, just one-on-one in front of the camera with JR. I think he tenses up a little bit. He's at that point in his career, he's not as comfortable. And so it comes off a little just a tiny bit more stiff. But when he was out interacting with people, he was a lot more natural. And I like that a lot. And I just want, you know, he he's not a salty veteran yet. So I'm just wondering about ways that we can put this champ in front of the people more to let his natural charisma show so that he can hold that belt and have a long run. Yeah, he's still learning. I mean, he's so young in his career. Right. I mean, he, he, he's a, he looks like a grown-ass man, but, I mean, in terms of longevity and time in the wrestling business, I mean, you know, he's not Ricky Steamboat at this point in terms of, Correct. you know, how, how long he's been around. He's not Bobby Eaton. You know, he, he's not those guys. Um, he, he hasn't been around since the days of, I mean, he's technically, I guess, been around from the time he got started, but he wasn't in Crockett, you know, doing those shows and in, in those smoke filled buildings where it's just nuts. Um, you know, he wasn't on TV when the four horsemen are doing their thing. And so, like, yeah, he's not. He, but I'm with you. I think I think with him, it, they didn't, we didn't see the whole thing there, but it was it was clipped. But. You know, when you make it short and sweet, he's very impactful. And to me, I don't need a guy like him cutting long Ric Flair promos either because, to me, his size and statue make up for anything else. Well, and, and that's that's right. That That's right. And so in some ways, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm tough on Sting for a reason, but, you know, well, Sting, is a, Sting. Sting is a, a good-looking guy. Fine, Christian athlete. Yeah, and he's got some. He's for the kids, and he's got charisma. It so he's got something too. It's everybody's got something, and again, it comes back to what we always learned in ECW: is how do you accentuate the positives? That might be one of the best. Hide all those many, many negatives. That might be one of the best things I've ever heard, or phrases I've ever heard about wrestling. Uh, Paulie would say accentuate the positives hide the negatives and, and f- he was a master at that in ECW because he didn't have all the great the greatest of the great but he made it look like it so it was like a, almost a mirage at times boy AEW could learn something from that boy they could alright so we're now here, and it looks like um, Ricky Steamboat standing there with Jr. And he looks like he's got Grandma's girdle or heating pad wrapped around his midsection. What's going on here? Let's hit play. It's not too long. Ricky Steamboat is uh, up there with Jr. at the beginning of the show. Uh, as we get to center stage, here it is. Gentlemen, and welcome to TBS and WCW Saturday night. My name is Jim Ross, and I'll be your host for the next two hours of exciting wrestling action. You're going to 
see the new world's heavyweight champion, Ron Simmons. Also, Sting is here. Plus, Jake the Snake Roberts will be here live with us at center stage. But a man that certainly has his sights set on the World Television Championship, currently held by stunning Steve Austin, is my good friend, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And Dragon, you're hot on the heels of the man that they say is the greatest television champion of all time. Well, that's right, Jim Ross. I'm hot on his heels. His claim to fame is the fact that he is the longest reigning national television champion ever. Well, that's fine and Danny, Mr. Steve Austin, and that tells me that your time is running out, that the odds are stacked against you. I had you on national television. I took you to the outer limits. I'm still suffering from some hurt ribs, but I took you to the limit, and what happened? Paul E. Danderson decides to throw in some brass knucks into the course of that match, and I beat you to the punch. That's right, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And if you want to use them on me, and if I get them first, brother, I will use them on you, and I showed that I use them on you. But my goal is to, for myself and all these outstanding fans here, and that is I'm going to still be hot on your trail. I'm still going off to the national television title. And Paul E. Dangerously, what's your man going to do when this dragon is 100% healthy with no hurt ribs? What a matchup that be, will be for the world television championship. Man, let's go up. Uh, I thought Steamboat was good there. I never thought, uh, we've talked about this a million times, I never thought he was just the greatest promo, but he's fired up there and tells Austin his time is running out of TV champ. What did you think? <laughs> I think Steamboat should have come out there and said, three years ago I had the strap and now you got me messing around with the TV title. <laughs> come on. I'm just Throw kidding. That was, that was fine. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was fine. All right, from there we go to Dustin Rhodes versus Joe Kazana. We get a pitcher in pitcher from Valentine and Slater. Valentine promises to finish the job when it comes to Dustin and Wyndham. I, I don't really have much from this, but it's Joe Kazana, Smoky Mountain Wrestling, Joe Kazana. Doc, what do you have from this one? Um, I do not you and I have talked this week and, and you know, I am pretty dark here in in what's going to happen i'm watching a lot of most of this vast majority of this for the first time ever uh i I have no idea what's about to happen but i i have this feeling that this is going to bring dusty out at some point i don't i don't think so okay i like i said i'm guessing because i don't even think I don't even remember anything happening with Valentine and Slater, like anything memorable. Maybe, maybe on Pro or Worldwide. I, I but I, if we're talking strictly Saturday night, I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So no wads right. apparently this week, and uh, lots of arm drags here in this one. No, no wads, which means it was quiet on the mic. <laughs> There's a lot of space for Jr. to work. He can lay out. He can he can get his stuff in and not have to worry about Mister Filibuster. <laughs> I put I put a meme on Twitter and Instagram a few weeks back of 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 Watts filibustering and whatnot. And let's just say some people just really don't like when you criticize when you criticize greats and memes. <laughs> okay. Ah, oh, boy. All right. Dustin Rhodes wins. Bulldog, then uh, Lariat, then Bulldog for the win. And uh, that was that. From there, Doc, we go to a promo from Dustin. I uh, I wasn't planning on playing it, but you can let me know if, you ha- if you'd like me to. No, I didn't have anything. Well, Dustin mentions that Valentine and Slater failed to injure him like they intended to, and he congratulates Simmons on winning the world title. And he says eventually he wants to be world champion too. And um, very much meat and potatoes. I, I, like I said, it wasn't bad. Just nothing to shake a stick at. From there, speaking of something to shake a stick at, Johnny B. Bad is taking on Mike Thor. Um, bro, we got a couple. I wanted to mention this in the last match, but I was saving it for here. We got a couple of brothers dancing in the third row who are just living it up in this episode. I saw them. And here they come. I want you to watch him as Johnny B. Bad's making his entrance with his stick, his confetti stick. Uh, look, look, you see the brothers right there? They they are yep. dancing the entire show from the hard camera. They, they you will see them 
just just having a great time. And, and that was that was my main note from this match. Uh, other than to say Jim Ross does talk about Brad Armstrong being injured and banged up, and they hope to have him back in September. But remember, he's currently the light heavyweight champ. So Jim Ross says stay tuned. Yeah, those 30 days are definitely ticking. Let me go to you. Anything from this match between Johnny B. Bad, the bad man, and Mike Thor, who is about to shoot his confetti stick out. Is that what we're calling it? Because I I was like, does he have a name for that confetti stick? Is it the Bad Blaster? Or I guess it could be the Bad Blaster. That, That sounds worse than confetti stick. Okay. You tell us out there when you hear this what they called it, because I don't remember it having an official name. I guess technically it's a confetti stick, but I could see it being called the Bad Blaster too. He he really he releases he provides it relief when he's shooting them. Come on, come on. All right, that's kid stuff. Just kid stuff. All right, he what looks are your thoughts on today? You think it might be because of the lighting? It's, it felt bright at times, like they had the, the lighting up. But he does not look like Maybe he went to BET and somebody in the North Tower said, hey, what are we doing here, guys? Once again, they got plenty of shoot brothers on the roster that they could send to <laughs> BET. Can we I mean, shoot? Ron Simmons was there. Hey, next time, can we send one of the real black people over to BET? Well, what? In, to, just to... You know, reinforce. It was in 1991. It wasn't 92 because I, I have people reach out to me say it, it wasn't 92. I'm like, yeah, I know, but um, you you know, I mean, <laughs> it sent the white man on BT to talk about the plight of the black wrestler. It's the greatest thing ever. So, this was pretty short, but I like the fact that Mike Thor got a couple of seconds of offense because he's a big fella and he's he looked put together. So he got a couple punches in there, but then JBB turns it around on him real fast. Yep. But that clothesline was was decent from Mike Thor. Mike Thor looks like he's kind of a dollar store, great value, spivey. Oh, yeah. It's kind of a little bit. Such a ridiculous haircut. So he gets a little bit of offense. JBB comes out with the with the quick win. Made sense. Yep. We get a big boot by Johnny and then the left hook. And um he wins that match. One, two, three. From there, we go to Big Josh versus Bobby Eaton in the next match. Um I I actually had the, I have a note from this. I stopped counting at this point in the show, but we're 14 minutes into this minus commercials of the uh, episode. And Jr. has mentioned Monroe, Louisiana and New Orleans at the downtown municipal probably four times at this point, selling us on being there next week. He said, and, we're going to be back in what some of you remember is the old, uh, um, mid South territory. At one yeah. Point. He, Kept he kept bringing it up, and I mean I get it. They they got the dog on the roster, so you keep saying that. Yeah, I mean I, that's that's the only way I took it. Those brothers are still dancing the whole time. All right, hey man, so Jim, nothing, nothing. These are free tickets. Let's go have fun, man. Jim Ross talks about Eaton and Arn breaking Larry Zabisco's arm last week, and then Paul E joins Jr. on commentary, and Paul E is griping about how Arn and Bobby. Lost their tag belts to the Steiners, but then the Steiners lost to Dr. Death and Terry Gordy, and now Arn and Bobby can't get a rematch because the Steiners are number one contenders. He even mentions Bruno, so we're talking about Bruno again this week. Uh-oh. He's, he's got what well, one? I want to make one point, and then I'll throw it to you. He's got a point about the, the rematch because if the people you lost it to then lost it, then you never actually, actually get your rematch. But then when he talks about Bruno, he says... Larry Zabisco always wants credit for retiring Bruno. Well, guess what? The Dangerous Alliance retired Larry Zabisco. So we're talking about Bruno this week. Paulie also said that Big Josh was one burrito short of a combination plate. He is looking a little tubby around that waist. A little thick. I thought so, too. I was wondering if it was just me. Um, 
I can't believe when is when is Doink gonna happen? When is he gonna? Yeah, we're not. On? We ain't far off. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's he ain't here much longer. Yeah, I would. I would. If I was a little surprised to see him come out at all. That's what I'm saying. Still um, around. Never yeah. forget, he was U.S. tag champ with Ron Simmons at one point in January oh of this year. I had completely forgotten that. Now, he's yeah, got a the little way ponytail they aired it. to start the match. Ugh. That 1990s ponytail. Ugh. <laughs> Rassler ponytail. I was like, where's your fanny pack, bro? I guarantee you he walked in with the fanny pack. Yeah, he walked in with <laughs> Uh, what, was in, what was in a Matt Bourne fanny pack? Oh, come on. I don't want to insult the deceased. Okay. That's fine. In fairness, what? there's a lot of guys still living that had some of the same stuff that Matt Bourne had in his fanny pack. I would say that, it, well, okay, so would pills be in it? Yeah. Okay. I like Austin used to tell a story on his show back when he wasn't lazy and was still doing one. Boy, that's going to work some people into a shoot. <laughs> Uh, he would he would talk about he said he said the guys would come in and they that that fanny pack they'd take it off and throw it on a bench or a table and you you just hear those pills rattle <laughs> it's just I remember that when, when he said that I was like yeah I can remember dudes doing that <laughs> um, and that was on the Outlaw Mud shows so in the Indies uh, all right any other thoughts from this match between these two before I go to the finish doc because they worked a little while. Paul E. joked at one point that he's voting Democrat for Jesse Ventura. I didn't think Jesse was a Democrat. I thought he was an independent. But that little comment was probably pretty innocent back then. But uh, you ain't hearing that on corporate wrestling today. No, not, you're not hearing that today. And it's not uncommon. I mean, even if he was at that point more democratic it, people change as they get older oftentimes i mean not to get into a political discussion i just realized P- paul lee looks like fucking uh who grimace from um <laughs> from uh because he's getting chunky uh, he's not getting chunky but that um that suit is too big for him the pants and jacket I mean, do you see that? How big that is on it? It's like he's wearing a a robe. Uh, he looks like Grimace from McDonald's. Oh. Look at him. And I didn't realize at this point, Paulie's hair is starting to recede as much as it is. But it oh is. yeah. Anyway, the finish. Bobby sends Josh into the corner. Bobby hits the turnbuckle. Josh rolls him up, but Bobby reverses it and pins Big Josh. And Josh and Eaton's feet are in the ropes, but um, the ref doesn't see any of it. So Bobby Eaton wins and. Can't even yeah, right, see it. right guy, right guy, probably one hundred percent. All right, Doc. So we're gonna go to a Nikita Koloff promo, but before the promo, they do show a replay of Nikita versus Rude from Worldwide. Um, Rude hit the ref when Nikita ducked, and Nikita hit the sickle on Rude, but no ref was there to count. So anyway, they show all that, and I guess the bad blood. But then they go back to center stage. And uh, we're going to hear a quick promo from Nikita. We haven't heard from him for a while, so let me play this. It's not very long. Here it is. That's all I've asked for all along. It's to have Ravishing Rick Rude. One-to-one. Man-to-man competition. No DA. No Medusa. Just you and I, Ravishing Rick Rude. And tomorrow in the Omni, you have to walk the aisle. And I have to walk the aisle. And we'll see right there in the Omni, Ravishing Rick Rude. Who can walk out as champion? Just remember one thing, Ravishing Rick Rude. It's only going to take one sickle for the one, two, three. And I'll shit to Ravishing Rick Rude, I can't think of a better place than right here in Atlanta, right in the Omni, to walk out as champion and once again become the people's champion. I'll see you in the Omni tomorrow. And that big event starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we'll be back right after this timeout. Rick Rude, I'm sorry, Nikita, it was three or four Chateau ties in there. So I, that was why I wanted to play it. He he couldn't let off a Chateau Um I, I don't mind that because you, you're trying to get people into the Omni. Like you just, you know, you got your house so business still going on. 
you're trying to get him into the Omni. So I don't know what the Omni did. I didn't look it up, but there's that. Doc, any thoughts? Yeah, he hit the you got to walk that aisle. So he's doing Ric Flair, but at the end of the sentence, he's doing Chateau Atas. So yeah, he had three or four of those in there. It was funny. I wish Harper was here just to comment on what these two look like that we're looking at with Vinny Vegas and DDP as they come out. Uh, That's a Kenny's Key West look right there, if there ever is one, too. Maybe not with the sequins that DDP has on, but uh, yeah, they look like two douchebags at Kenny's Key West. Well, I always imagine that DDP running a bar, because he did that for years, would be a Kenny's Key West type situation. So there you go. Very astute observation, and I do agree with you. Okay. I, I, I could I could certainly see that. All right, so we go to Vinny Vegas in DDP, the Vegas connection, mm-hmm. versus Chad Bird and the Italian Stallion. We do get a picture-in-picture from JYD and the Big Cat. They said nothing. We talked about it last week. Teaming them up is a terrible idea. I don't care how much JR tries to sell us on it. And JR is trying to sell us on, once again, the return to Louisiana next week. It's just not good. Um, these two did not need to be put together. Mr. Hughes is being underutilized, and it's just not good. But um, JR also mentions the upcoming clash and mentions mentions they're bringing back some legends for it, such as Gordon Soley and, and JR says, and other dignitaries. Doc, it's like I said, it's a monumental clash in terms of it's the 20th one. So that makes it pretty big. And they do bring a bunch of legends back. But let me go to you. What do you have from either the commentary or the match? Well, and that's going to be to celebrate 20 years of TV on uh, wrestling on TV on TBS. So that's a that's a big deal. I at, at least Big Cat got to say something. We don't get to hear him talk very much. So at least he got a quick line in there before uh, before JYD spoke. Um, I don't know. DDP yeah. used the uh, <laughs> leg drop to get the one, two, three. So he's doing Hogan's leg drop. Um, other than that, I'm not too interested in these two guys together. Uh, so there you go. The most amazing thing whenever I see like Nash out there and – DDP out there is, you know, if somebody would have told you at this moment, there's going to be a wrestling boom in four years and these two are going to be big pieces of it. You wouldn't have believed it in 92. These two guys are going to hold the strap at different points. Yeah. not I mean, not even that part, just, you know, there will be key pieces in the boom. I mean, they're not the, I, they're they're key pieces for different reasons, I guess. You know, we we all know what Kevin Nash does when he comes in, and DDP is there. It's just you know, eventually he becomes world champion, which is crazy. I'm just saying, man, when you look at it, if somebody would have told you four years from now this is what you're gonna see, you would been like, huh? So yeah, all right, we'll keep going. Um, belly to back suplex by Vegas, and then DDP does a leg drop, and Page and Vegas win. From there, we go to. Larry Zbysko, um, before we go to his promo, we do see a replay of Larry getting his arm broken last week uh, when the match was stopped because of the broken arm. Uh, in the promo, Larry does promise to get back at the Dangerous Alliance, and he is the one who distributes pain. I'm not going to play it, Doc. It's nothing really impactful, and at least I don't remember if it ever goes anywhere because at some point Larry's going to be on commentary. Do you have anything from it, though? Do you think Larry's wearing that sling or cast at home? Does he have kids? I don't know. But Larry, Larry's older by this point. Probably not. Nah, he's not. He's not doing. He's not doing what Dusty did to Dustin. Okay. Which is one is of the wearing, greatest stories ever. Is he wearing it at the mall? I I would think if he goes out in public, he is. Yeah. Okay. That story about Dustin. And Dusty with the yeah. boot is one of the greatest things that I don't think people talk about enough. Because when you hear Dustin tell it, it's immaculate. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, du- you know, when Dusty had his uh, leg injured, he 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 wore the, the boot around the house. And Dustin, I don't remember how old Dustin would have been at that time, but 
Dustin, you know, just assumed, yeah, yeah, this is, this is a shoot. You know, my dad really, they, they really hurt his leg. And I guess one day Dustin is snooping around the house and Dusty didn't have the boot on wherever he was at. And the boot is, is sitting in the closet or something. And he stumbles upon it and he's like, that son of a bitch. Like he didn't know what working somebody was at the time, but he was like, that son of a bitch worked me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and sure when did. Dustin, when Dustin retells the story, it, it's like a light bulb goes off in his head. You can, it, it's just funny the way he says it, but it is immaculate. I, I, I appreciate you asking that question for that reason. <laughs> Well, uh, Larry does say money buys junk and revenge is soothing to the soul. <laughs> Larry the lyricist. <laughs> That's right. Okay, from there, we're going to go to Cactus Jack. He's with JR. Let's hear what he's got to say in his promo. He's going to be talking about Ron Simmons here. Here it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was announced earlier in the program that live on primetime on Wednesday night, September the 2nd, the heavyweight championship of the world will be contested right here at center stage, live on TBS at the Clash of the Champions. Ron Simmons will defend the world's heavyweight championship against this man, Cactus Jack. Hello and behold, Jim Ross. A few short weeks ago, Cactus Jack was out here talking title shots, and you looked at me like I was crazy. Well, the WCW board of directors picked up on a good thing, and Ron Simmons, I gotta congratulate you on having the guts to do what no man has ever had the guts to do before. Put your title on the line against me. And not only that, Jim, September 2nd Clash of the Champions, it's live! Which means you can't edit me out, you can't censor the violence, and no matter how ugly it may get, you can't turn off the cameras and pretend it didn't happen. Yeah, Ron Simmons, something real ugly is going to happen to you, and its name is Cactus Jack. Because not only does Cactus Jack, world champion, have a nice ring to it, on September 2nd, it's going to have a nice belt, too. (laughs) Thank you very much, Cactus Jack. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back up to Rhubarb Jones. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Uh, Thoughts on Cactus right there, talking about Simmons as he goes for the world title. I thought it was good because you can't edit it out. You can't censor it. It's going to happen. That That's good. Yeah. I always like it when they talk about the board of directors making the matches because to me, one of the things I hate about the current product is they're just making matches right in front of you. Part of this is, is that I used to, as a kid, sit there and think about this board and like they'd have their papers out and like, okay, so what matches are we going to make? And it's just sometimes when you don't show everything, you let your imagination run. So. Yeah, it's an old territory. Well, I say it's an old territory thing, but I know World Class did it, and I know Mid South sure. did it. Uh, it, and it and it worked. Um, yeah, it worked. I don't. I mean, I I don't know what the alternative is to that now because I don't know. You know, people know it's a work. So could you could you get away with that nowadays? I don't know, but it is. What's a work? I'm with What's you. A work? <laughs> All right. Let's continue. We go to Jake Roberts versus Randy Stallings, who's out here again with this just the most ridiculous haircut. What a haircut. I mean, you heard Harper talk about it last week, so we're not going to drone on about it. But this haircut is – it's something to see when you see this dude. You can see it. You can watch it with us on Patreon, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. It is, it is very pathetic, uh, this haircut. It's, it's, it's just pathetic. That's a guy Jake right there some, that used to have twisty ties in his hair telling you, the listener, that this guy's pathetic and he's right. Sir, they're called braids and not twisty ties, but okay. Okay. Yeah. This it's just it's just, it's just <laughs> this dude's hair. I can't it's it's morbidly fascinating. It's like what the shit, man? This bowl cut I don't know. It it just it's terrible. I don't know. <sighs> All right. Well, Jake is gonna win. He's gonna hit the DDT and win. Doc, any thoughts? Uh, well, you have Cactus out on color. He calls Jake John Wayne as he, you know, came over the barricade to get Sting. I've always thought during a match when, you know, Jake throws an opponent out and then slithers out after him that that always looks so sleazy. Is that where he does it here? I don't Maybe have a timestamp for it, but um, yeah, here. I like what I like, and this is subtle psychology jake goes for the ddt 
and the crowd starts cheering and he backs off and he won't give it to him yet. That's how you do it when you're a heel. Not That's, like Michael Hayes was doing it when he was supposed to be a heel. He's supposed to be a heel, but this is why I hated Hayes as a free bird in, in WCW. One of the reasons. Now, I didn't hate him, but I dislike. Harper would say it every week. Are they supposed to be heels or baby faces? You would sure. say it. Are they heels or baby faces? And it's because they're supposed to be heels at times, and yet he's egging the crowd on as he's about to deliver the DDT. That's just stupid. And right there is when, when Jake did what he did. They were chanting for DDT, and he didn't give it to him. He backed off. He eventually does right here. But you just and described Jake perfect. Look at the pin. Yeah, that's just dirty. You want a wrestler's boot on your the side of your face for no, a pin? No, because it's been on the urinal floor and ain't with Jake's. You no telling what what crack house that which urinal the floor, which urinal in. floor that was right? Yeah, yeah. So no, I I don't want that on my. I, face. I don't blame you there. That's it's gross. Yeah, unacceptable. Um, well, but Jake's Jake wins. Getting re- Jake is getting ready to say a few things here, bro. Yeah, buddy. So after Jake wins, he's going to cut a promo, and uh, we're going to go to that right now. He's with Jim Ross. Uh, Here it is. As I mentioned, it could happen tomorrow afternoon in the Omni. Remember, it's Kids Day out at the Omni. Two kids admitted free with each paid adult admission. Three o'clock is the starting time here in Atlanta. It has been signed, as you all know, Jake the Snake, Roberts, and Sting. But none of us will ever forget what transpired on Sunday, August the 2nd in Baltimore, Maryland. Don't you understand? If you go out fishing, do you put a little bait on the hook? If you go out hunting, do you use a dog? Only if you're smart. That's exactly what I've done. I set the trap. It was very simple. Because you see, Sting, you're a simple man. I set the trap and you fell for it like a fish. Swallowed the hook. You came down, I came down. Sure, if I want to grab the bull by the tail, I don't get much done, do I? No, you have to go to the head, to the front. And that's exactly what I did with you, Sting. I punished you. But simply because you deserve to be punished. People that stand above and look down and think they know the answer. You don't have a clue. Yeah, DDT once, DDT twice. All in a good night's work, Sting. I'm gonna teach you a very valuable lesson. You don't play with snakes without expecting to get bit. You show up in the Omni. All I'm asking you to do, Sting, right now, do yourself a favor, do these kids out here a favor, and quit. Simply put the tights up, put the boots in the closet, and quit. Don't you think it's smarter to keep quiet and be thought of fool than to speak up and erase all doubt? Would you? Do you think Sting would use drugs? No. No, Sting wouldn't use drugs. Would Sting drink and drive? Of course not. Would Sting take a gun and put five shells in a six-shell chamber and play Russian roulette? Obviously not, Jake. Then don't show up at the Omni. They say it's kids' day out. That's sick. You think I'm sick? That is sick. You're wanting the kids to come down and watch the end of a man's career. If that's what WCW wants and that's what Sting wants, then it will be done. Three o'clock. Time's up. Fans, we'll be back with more on WCW Saturday night. Right. I don't need to see the snake right after this. Keep it in the bag. Uh, Jake, Jake Roberts is phenomenal. Your thoughts? So did he just allude to the fact on air that he does drugs, drives drunk, and will play Russian roulette because Sting won't? I mean, it was very sinister sounding and possibly so. Okay. Because damn. The one part that I like to listen to and I enjoy, but I don't know that it's good for business, is to call Kids Day Out sick. Uh, Oh, it's Kids Day Out. Maybe we should go. And then Jake is talking about sadistic shit. And he's like, oh, maybe we shouldn't. I don't know. I enjoyed the promo. It's probably getting the toot toot. I'm just saying, 
is that the best thing to say for business? We're still in an era where, for better or worse, I'm not trying to have a, a discussion about this. It's just a matter of fact, we're still in an era where everybody's not overanalyzing that stuff. And okay. we weren't we weren't as sensitive to such I got things. You. That's fair. And, and it's a I mean, it's a great line. It's he's out there to do evil, clearly. Yes. Okay. Now, if you tried that today, you'd get Uh-oh. pulled off of air. See, I mean, you just, you, you just you just you, you, you can't. can't pull that off. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that's right either. It's I, a fact. I, it's just just a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. All right. We are a lot softer as a collective society than we were. God, I sound like an old man. I hate, I hate saying that. But you sound like you're 112 years old. I know, man. It's I, I hate being the old guy, but it's just a matter of fact. Because you remember how soft we were told we were. I do. I remember how soft we were told we were, and then I watch – my kids and and some of the things that they let get to them and I'm like just mm. just 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 don't let that don't let you know yeah. an opinion of someone affect you in that way it's just an especially opinion. that person that you're you're talking about yeah I hate to tell you this kid but your friend is a trifling piece of crap I can see they, it from over here <laughs> There you go. That's exactly <laughs> it. Oh, I'm wait, like, I'm not, to, I'm not supposed to say that. I got canceled in my own family. Damn it. Yeah. Um. Jake was. Uh, yeah. Jake was. But Jake was tremendous there. I mean, he he presents a physical and psychological threat to Sting. He's credible on every level. I got news for you too. It's not going to end with just that. It's doing. It's gonna keep going. He's gonna cut. Well, I, I know for a fact that we've got to spin a wheel. Yeah, point. yeah. It 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 gets. I mean, it, it probably goes on for a little. No, it doesn't go on for a little long. Well, but I, I think that I think I remember. And you know, dark period and all. When they spin the wheel, they get like something like a monkeys in Malaysia me- me- <laughs> melee. No, no. No. What do you, I haven't said that in a while, but what do you think they do to monkeys in Malaysia? Boy, that's an old one from this show. And I just realized the brothers dancing in the second or third row, one of them's got a Tom Zink shirt on. Of course. Oh, well, my they're God. Be, they're not going to like what happens later. Well, let's continue. Sure. We are we are watching a match between Brian Pillman and Tracy Smothers. I talked about last week. Tracy is... is just about done. They mm-hmm. do announce Smothers as Young Pistol Tracy, which is interesting because the Pistols have been non-existent for a long time now, but I guess he's still a young, quote-unquote, Pistol. And uh, like I said, he isn't long for this promotion. From the state of Wyoming, Tracy Smothers. I can't believe we have made it through Tracy's run here just about, but this this is the the twilight days of that. Doc, what did you he, have from these like, two? Why do you keep saying that? In the ring. Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> I ain't even from the Wyoming. I guess they're not. I ain't never, never, I ain't never even been there, man. Come on. I've never just been there. Come on. Come on. Uh, what, who's that in the ring? Uh, what's his name? Um, Pillman. I went blank. Pillman? No, no, no. The announcer this week. Rhubarb? Not Terry. Yeah. Come on, Rhubarb. You don't. Just, just say my name and my weight. You ain't got to say you, I, I'm from Wyoming. I ain't ever even been there. Come on. You want to know what's funny? Um, Now, when Tracy gets worked up, he doesn't speak like I'm about to say. But that when he's on the porch and he's just golly gee, I ain't even been to Wyoming. I'm sure they're nice people. That's like Tracy Smothers. When you talk, if you've ever talked to Tracy Smothers and he wasn't like it wasn't a shoot interview or something. I mean, he was like that on the show with me the few times he did it. That that's Tracy. That's how he talks. He's just he's like a good old country boy kind of. But country boy can survive. I never forget Tracy talking about the you know how he was still like you know he was still on the Indies wearing the Confederate flag gimmick, right? Sure. 
And he was like, he's like, man, you you got it'd be surprised how many times I got to tell people. He's like, that's not me, man. It's just gimmick, guys. I'm just, yeah. I'm just working. You know, he's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not out there wanting the Confederacy to come back. <laughs> he say he would say that. Uh, yeah, <sighs> I re- I remember, Mike. I remember. Poor Tracy. Gone too soon. Anyway, uh, thoughts on this match? They go for a while. They they, 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 they at least let him work. They do. The crowd is dead, though. Real dead. You know why? Um, you know why? Because they've been burying Tracy, and then you send him out here in a cold match versus Pillman, who both guys know what they're doing, but it's it's nothing. Tracy, Tracy's well, been relegated to just enhancement talent. Sure. I well, mean, this they're, was, they're, yeah. This was long, and I will tell you, that we like both guys a lot, a lot. There was nothing wrong with it, but it just didn't do much for me, just like the fans. Yeah, they're sitting down. Not even sitting up. Anyway, so the finish. We get a hip toss by Pillman, then a drop kick off the second rope that we just saw on the uh, video version, tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Then Pillman goes for it again, and Tracy hits Pillman with a kick as Pillman comes off the rope. Uh, Pillman kicks out on the pin attempt. Tracy sends Pillman into the ropes and catches... Um, I'm sorry, or does Pillman... I forget how who catches who, but... Uh, anyway, Pillman catches Smothers in a Russian crucifix, and Pillman's win- Pillman wins by pin in the longest match on the show. It wasn't yes. bad. They just... No. Nope. I mean, they've buried Tracy, and to send him out there and I, have a competitive match in one particular week is just not going to cut it. When I see these two in the ring, I expect more because of my opinion of them. But this is also one of those examples where if the crowd would have been into it, you'd have been into it more but the crowd is dead so there's no reaction i mean they Correct. reacted when pillman won but it's just silent man no 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 i i, I completely agree all right because at first my first thought was this is kind of not getting me what's wrong with me and that's when i went back and realized the crowd was dead and made that note so yeah you're right you're right i i just think it's completely unfortunate in terms of what tracy i mean he he's He's just not. Hey, he's going to well. leave and give us great moments, but it would have been a lot nicer for Tracy's life if he could have stayed and made that, you know, 75, 85, 95,000 a year here and gotten a, somewhat of a decent mid card push than be over in Eastern Tennessee slogging it through the mountains for a 1200 a month. Exactly. We love him in Tra- We love him in Smoky Mountain. The fact of the matter is. Even selling gimmicks, he wasn't going to make the money he could make in WCW in Smoky Mountain. So while he became a great territory star in Smoky Mountain, you want to see a guy like him be a star and make money and make real good money in WCW during this era. And we just unfortunately never got to see that. Right. It's, it's just unfortunate. All right. Well, but you can't downplay his SMW run. T is for terrible, H is for hell, U is for ugly, G is for jail because a thug can't spell. Love it. Uh, Tracy and SMW. All right, let's go to Sting now. You know, Jake cut this sinister promo talking about shotguns and all kind of can, craziness earlier. So now I, we need to hear I, from Sting. Go ahead, Doc. Jump in here. I want to mention, talk. I want to talk about this promo on the front end. And we don't normally do this, but I want everybody to listen to this with a different lens because I went back and I listened to it twice. And okay. there's different places that you could call the action. But, Mike, where do we call the action? Down the middle. Right down the middle. So I'm going to tell you all my thoughts on this ahead of the promo so that y'all can listen to it the way I think I did. I do not think Sting got off to a good start here. He was his normal messy self. But somewhere in the middle of this promo, I think he flipped a switch. And actually had a really good, strong finish. And that's the that's even the worst problem with Sting, is that when he does something like that, our old basketball coach here, Rick Carlisle, used to say he's telling on himself because it's in there somewhere. So that was my thought on this promo as we're about to listen to it is. Normal kind of goofy start, 
and then gets good towards the middle. So let's go to it now and see what Doc is talking about. And um, I don't disagree. We'll talk about it on the other side. Ready? It's Kids Day out tomorrow at 3, and you've got Jake the Snake Roberts in the Omni. Yeah, Rossi, who is that guy that walks to the ring carrying a snake with him everywhere he goes? Is it Jake the Snake? That's what I think they call him. Yes, it is. How about the guy that gave me a couple of DDTs, whacked me with a chair in the back? Who is that? That's Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah, speaking of that snake, that snake bit a couple of guys, made them real sick one time, didn't it? Didn't it? Right. Yes, it did make a couple of guys real sick, but let me tell you something, Jake. Do you think I'm like a little puppy dog that's going to roll over and play dead for you? Or like I'm a little puppet? You pull a string and you can scare the stinger? You think I could look ringside into the eyes of one of those little stingers and tell them, no, I couldn't do it because I was afraid, or worse yet, Look at myself in the mirror in the morning and say I couldn't do it because Jake scared me. Not a chance because when I was a kid they told me I couldn't wrestle Jake because I wasn't big enough. But I am now. And then I blew out my knee and they said I'd never come back. But I'm wrestling now Jake. And come Sunday night in the Omni Jake, I know you. But the problem is my friend, you don't know who the hell I am. All right, ladies and gentlemen, some very strong words from the Stinger. That event starts at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon right here in Atlanta in the Omni. Let's go back up to Rhubarb Jones. Uh, That ended well. Yeah, when he said, it, I, I got it where he flipped the switch. They said I wasn't big enough to wrestle, but I am now. And he looked straight in the camera. He's got that square jaw. He's a good-looking guy. It's like, dude, if you would do a little bit more of that, we might have something here. Yeah, that was really, really good. It was really good. And the first part was like, what's he talking about? The snake biting people when they're sick. And everybody knows Jake the snake has a snake. What are you talking about? But then he finished strong. And I'll be honest with you. He did so well there that if Jake hadn't cut a th- that little line about drugs and drinking and driving and, and Russian roulette... I would have given Sting the toot toot award this week for that. I'm I'm still not decided because that that is one I, of the I'm best promos. I'm telling you, we call it down the middle, y'all. Everybody's like, oh, you hate Sting, man. Steve Borden's a good dude, and he, and that, look, kudos to the man for still being able to do the things he's doing at his age in the ring today. I yeah. just don't like this character because. I know that we need everybody to be their best because we're f- trying to fight off Vince. And it's even more infuriating when I hear him cut that promo because it's like, damn, dude, you you got it in you. We need more of that. We need to mine that. We need to accentuate that. Yeah, it was good. It, it was. If, if you got that version of Sting, if you got that version of Sting Weekly and not the ow. You can still do some of that, but you got to do some of this. Yeah, because the the other version is just goofy. Yeah, you can. But I get it. It's kids. Like he was. That was one of your jams back in the day, wasn't it? What? You can get with this, so you can get with that. It was all right, but I ain't gonna say all that. Oh snap! But this was the sting was money right here. I mean that that's how you. Look, I, I know they're building up to something that's not happening right now. To you know, well, technically, I guess it is. But I, I know they're building up long-term storylines between these two. But that—that's—that's that's money. Like, if you got that every week from from Sting and Jake, you you just keep drawing people into the building for them too, and that's what you needed. So yeah, it, it's really good. All right, we continue. Dick Slater is taking on the Z Man in the next match, and. I ain't going to lie, this, this this got the old fast forward button. I'm not about to watch uh, Mr. Ambien out here. Okay, so I watched it for, the. I, I took one for the team and watched it. And boy, I kind of was glad I did. Can you give me 108.45? I don't remember exactly. I was watching this in a car at, uh, at soccer practice. Or look at the quality of Zinc's punches. Are they okay here? Right there? They look all right. Okay. I'm actually shocked Slater's 
don't look that good. It's like he's having a slap fist with him. But yeah, they look fine. Okay. Um, how many times over the years in wrestling after the show at the bar do you think Slater introduced himself to some lady as Dirty Dick? All the time. What's your name? I'm Dirty Dick. Oh, what does that mean? You want to find out? <laughs> he, he, um, I will say this about Slater. I think he's, he, he looks like he's in decent shape. He does. This era. He's not like cut or anything, but like he doesn't have a big old huge beer gut. He's, he's, he's looking like he's in decent shape. I agree. Um, the crowd was still kind of quiet throughout this match. Um, and why don't we get to the finish? Cause I'm sure you want to talk about that. Well, we just saw it, but basically Z man misses a drop kick and then Slater pile drives Mr. Ambien and wins and the right guy won. Oh <laughs> yeah. That's going to make some of the contingent, the army out there a little upset. I couldn't believe they beat him. I popped on that and I uh, wanted to hear you get excited about it. Cause we know you're a dirty dirt bag, but, Okay. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Dick there Slater wins. Go. I'm telling you, I, I I make fun of Z-Man all the time, but he's taken some losses in this quote unquote run of his push. here. I don't even want to call it a push, but I mean, like he's lost to Vader. He's lost to the Halloween Phantom. There's, he's been involved in squash matches. This wasn't a squash, but like for a guy that I'm not complaining cuz he just does nothing for me. Like he's gotten we I don't know how I I'm I was ever supposed to take him serious with some of the jobs he's done. I yeah, I got you. It's it's confusing booking regardless of your opinion of him. Yes, exactly. That's the point I try to make with him when I'm like there's just nothing there. Um but anyway, um any other thoughts, Doc, as we go to the next clip? No. So in the next clip, I'm not going to play it, but we got Teddy Long with his uh, with his shiny do-rag on. He's got purple, I guess, in honor of WCW, uh, and he's got a, I guess it's a purple jacket, although it looks a little bluish, too. Uh, JR makes an announcement that Teddy Long is going to be on the broadcast team, mm. and then Teddy congratulates his homie Ron Simmons for my being the homie. new world champion, and he says, my homie. And I uh, love Teddy. Teddy, uh, Teddy, something. But uh, yeah, just a quick announcement that he's going to be on the broadcast team. Broadcast team, uh, he'll be involved in like some of the secondary shows as far as commentary, and he's going to eventually start doing a bunch of uh, like backstage interviews on I think Saturday night in the next couple months. I forget the timeline of it all, but he will be, yeah, he'll he'll be involved in uh, broadcasting. Doc, from there, any thoughts on that before we go to the next match? No, I like Teddy. We're we're fans of his work, so I think you you got it covered there. Ron Simmons comes out in the next match. He's taking on Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker from the State Patrol. The brothers in the second or third row are still doing all the dancing, and they are loving Ron Simmons. All the kids. There's tons of kids at this tape, and tons. They're all at ringside. I, I got to imagine if you're like 8, 9, 10, 11, man, you are – in hog heaven seeing Ron Simmons, the world champion out of TV taping like this. And let me just say, this. Free. there's a couple of times during this show where the cameraman might be wanting to show the kids and that's perfectly fine, but you show it on a, on two little girls who are obviously underage and you leave it and they're not cheering. They're just sitting there. That makes you a pervert. I can't remember when it was, but I was like, will you take the, I was like, oh, I, you know, I'm taking notes. I'm watching. It's like, those are kids. That was and earlier. Just, and they're just sitting know, there. Yeah. It was in one of the matches earlier. We, we, it was on when we were, uh, it, they, yeah. they left it on those two girls for like too long. I didn't say anything, but they were, I mean, they were underage kids and they're just sitting there and I'm like, and JR's not even talking about it. I don't think at that point commentary, no. but they're just showing these young girls. I'm like, okay. Why? <laughs> but give him credit for showing Ron out there slapping hands with the kids and having fun and all that good stuff. Because the kids were those kids were enjoying seeing the world champion. All right. On, on to the match. 
man, Simmons is going to hit Parker with a big power slam and he's going to win by pin. It's not a very long match and it is what it needs to be because he's the world champion and this is Sergeant Buddy Lee Parker. Doc, did you have any thoughts on uh, what we see? It is what it needed to be. That's exactly what I had. It is what it needed to be and nothing more. Here comes a finish, I believe. You got there to hey, the, the whole point of that is, is that you got to see the champ in action. It's not what he did. It's that yeah, and got, we're – go ahead. Is That's it. We're also in an era where – so there was a time in the 80s where you didn't see the world champion frequently on TV. And then you started to see the champion more frequently, especially like a Ric Flair. You you would see him. If you watch the WWF TV, you didn't see Hulk Hogan every week. That's for damn sure. But we're in a time where we're starting to see, obviously, the world champion more on TV wrestling. Because, I mean, we saw Vader when he was the champion. I mean, we saw him. It was enhancement talent matches, though. Now we see Ron. We saw Sting when he was the champion. So there, we're in an era where we see the, the champ a lot. Um, not, not as not, it's not going to be what it is during the Monday night era, but it's, it's enough. Yeah. All you right. Got the doc. Doggies in the background going nuts. Somebody must have just got home. Is somebody breaking no, in. It's they're fucking idiots, bro. They're idiots. They bark at the wind sometimes. It's why well, I, I got a pair. And, I got and, three of those over here. And you know, what drives me up a wall. I told you this <laughs> yesterday. Ironically, they wind each other up. Yeah, they do. So, so one, one them, barks at. We they send man. It's cold outside right now. It's fucking cold. A price brutal. And, and one of them will send a tribute outside through the doggy door to start, and they'll start barking to call the other ones out there to get all worked up. I'm like, you mother. Bro, they're like a bunch of young bucks fans, bro. He, he went on mute. I'll let you see that. He went on. <laughs> And like they worked himself up over nothing. Man, it's like, come on, chill out. Um, let's go to Ron Simmons. He's gonna cut a promo, a quick promo with JR after he wins his match. Here it is. Ron, you've had a busy two weeks, a lot of uh congratulatory things, the telegrams. Uh, your old teammate Bobby Butler sends his regards and, and says congratulations, but the partying is over. The wars began. Yes, it has. It started a new era. And it couldn't have happened if it hadn't been for all those people out there. This belt is for you. And like you said, Jim, the party is over. But the party's still going on because I'm not going to let these people down. First of all, I don't want to let myself down. I appreciate all of the support, all the letters that came in. And one thing you can count on, that Ron Simmons will defend this title with every ounce of sweat, every drop of strength in my body. Because this belt means to me what makes being an All-American. It means to me being an idol for these kids. I'm going to show them that dreams do come true and it is possible to make your way in this world if you have a goal. Well, Ron, tomorrow at 3 o'clock, you've got that rematch with Big Van Vader. A lot of guys want a shot, including Sting, Ricky Steamboat, all these guys that are deserving of the opportunity. But first, it's Big Van Vader tomorrow here in Atlanta at 3. The contract has been signed, and that is the policy. Whenever there's been a change of hands in the belt, that you must give the former champion a rematch. I'm going to give him that because I'm going to prove to not only Van Vader, but to the world that Ron Simmons is no, flu- no fly-by-night champion. I beat him square in the middle of the ring, and Sting and the Stiles and everyone are good friends of mine, but they know that everyone in this sport wants to be number one. And right now, I'm the man. And in order to beat the man, they are going to have to beat me. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks to Ron Simmons for spending some time with us. What a challenge he has tomorrow, 3 o'clock in Atlanta's Omni. And when we come back, we'll see the man that he must face. 448-pound Big Van Vader is next on TBS. See, I like that they did that with Ron right there because, you know, it's again, we're – you know, we've, we've heard about the Omni now with Jake and Sting. Now we're pushing, hey, we got Ron and Vader. Let's try to put some butts in the seats for, for, for a show at the Omni. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. What are your thoughts on Ron right there? He's not bad at all, but I liked him better in the thing that he had earlier. All this talk about the Omni, Doc, is really making me want to look up if the it's results are there. It's going to be two poots of a, of a crowd is what it is. 
I know, you that's know. what sucks about it. Here's the thing, man, and I can't <laughs> figure this out, is that the wrestling's good, the stars are here, we're doing some things right, and it's just, we can't get any eyes on this product. Part of the problem, too, is they went to the damn Omni too much. Well, there's that. There's a lot of problems. I mean, we could we could sit here for the rest of the day and just talk about all that. What's What's today's date? Today is the 15th? Of what? Uh, August, August 15th, we're reviewing. Yeah, so they were in the Omni on the 16th. They are in the Omni oh. on the 16th. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. I was trying to see when they were there before, and actually it's kind of spaced out. It's it's not as, as soon as I thought it or as recent as I thought it was with the Omni. But I got it pulled up. Give me a second. Because they've been, they've been actually talking about it on a lot of the TVs, whether it's Worldwide, Pro, all of it. Oh, you watch all those? No, but you can see it on the results that I have pulled up. So, all right. It's um, August 16th. We're, we're watching, by the way, Vader is destroying Rex Cooper and Danny D's in the enhancement talent match after the promo. How many people do you think they drew at the Omni, Doc, on the 16th, a matinee show? 3,500. All right. Uh, the history of WWE.com for results for 1992. WCW says 6,700 people. However, it does say two children were admitted free with the purchase of an adult ticket. Ugh. So, but, uh, if you had one adult could bring two kids, you could, you could literally have a thousand adults <laughs> and a couple thousand kids based on just those thousand adults. So, you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> You're getting two out of three buys there. Uh, one person buys and three people go in. So ah, that's rough. That's it a is. rough one. But again, 6,700. I've seen worse at the Omni in terms of attendance results. Um, they're back at the Omni next month on September 20th. 1,600 people. Oof. Yeah, they, they, they took Oof. a bath. <laughs> Oof. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that as we were talking about. It. So so I guess in reality, the 6,700 isn't bad. You just don't know how many of those are freebies with kids. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say at least half. Would you agree? I think it might be safe. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, before we close the show, Vader does cut one more promo that we're going to listen to. He's got Harley Race out there with him, and then we're going to rate it and hand out the Toot Toot Award. Here is Vader and Harley with Jim Ross. J uh, Vader won, obviously, his match. Ladies and gentlemen, as we said, the rematch has been signed, and obviously Big Van Vader is more than ready. Well, what's mine, Ron Simmons? No pain, no fear, and no excuses. But Simmons, I've got to tell the world what went down in Baltimore. I trained for Sting. Every ounce of energy in my body was prepared for Sting. And who showed up? Ron Simmons. I trained for Muhammad Ali. And who showed up? Mike Tyson. I trained for Godzilla. And who showed up? King Kong. Yeah, WCW, you tricked the monster. But all you did was get the monster real mad. Now, Ron Simmons, I feel sorry for you because you got the gold, but now there's a price to pay, brother, because Vader is coming after you. Yeah. All right, Harley, I know you're good. There's a big matchup, 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Obviously, he is really ready. I want tomorrow night in the Omni, Jim Ross, the people of Atlanta are going to get a chance to see what a real man's I made out of. And he's standing right here. Ron Simmons, you and I have a lot in common. I won the world's title once and held it for seven weeks. You're not even going to last that long. The Omni, you're going down, Simmons. You're going down. What? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for being with us. Don't forget the main event tomorrow with Tony Schiavone and Magnum TA. For all of our fans in Atlanta, we'll see you in the Omni starting at 3 o'clock. So long, everybody. I thought Vader was tremendous there. Yeah. He was cocky and leaning forward. Yeah, I'm going to get my shit back.
Yep. I like how he doesn't have excuses, but then he kind of lists out a few excuses. Hey, that's what he should have done last week, but at least he did it this week, and and I I liked it. Yeah, I got no complaints. So, on that note, that that's how they go off air. Before we go off air, we need to rate it and hand out the toot toot award. Before we do so, want to remind you the only way you'll get the upcoming clash is by going to our clash review is by going to tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT, where we will review the next clash of the champions along with the clash as all of our WCW pay-per-views and all of the previous clash of the champions that we've done along with the ECW shows, the NWA power shows, the world class shows with Lance and I all available on Patreon at tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. And again, the latest AI Bill Watts and AI Jim Ross short clip episode is out available on Patreon right now. The only way you can get it is by signing up tinyurl.com slash Patreon BTT. Um, Doc, it is time to rate it. What rating are you going to give this one? The This is a good show. It was long, but good. and But there were some slower moments than last week, and we didn't see a world title. So I think it needs to be a little bit lower than last week. But and it's certainly not uh, an embarrassment by any stretch of the imagination. So all that filibuster. Let me give this a B+. Plus. Yeah, I'm going to give it an A-. minus. Like you say, we didn't see a world title match, but, I mean, Sting cut a great promo. Vader's good right there. You know, Jake cut a great promo. Ron's promo was fine. I mean, sure, we had some slow moments. The cactus was good. Yeah, A-. minus. So now, two to award time. I feel like this is a little bit tougher because there's several candidates. Who are you giving yours to? So I think that there's three legitimate candidates. Okay. I think Sting has a has a has a say. I think Vader has a say, but I'm still yeah. going with Jake cuz he's just ridiculous in his presentation. Yeah. I I'm with you. I I feel like Sting's got to say and Vader's got to say, but Jake Roberts is just badass. And I want you to think about something. This is another episode where we don't see Arn Anderson, and, and nor do we see Steve Austin. Rick Rude. I mean, I mean Rick Rude, and yet we gave it an A minus. And think about the people who aren't here today on the show. Um, they may be on the second half. I don't know. I haven't watched it in thirty plus years or more. But we didn't even see them, and yet we you gave it a B plus, I gave it a minus, a minus, and and even without those heavy hitters, you know we're given a pretty good rating along with Jake Roberts gets the two toot, and not only did Jake get it, but there were other contenders. So yeah, I, I was, it's a good episode and really a fun time discussing it with you. It would have went a lot different with Harper, that's for sure. <laughs> As we all we said it last week, the show is always better with all three of us. But life is a difficult thing, and life's a bitch. We're trying to na- we're trying to navigate schedules, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, man, it happens. It happens. Um, I do want to remind everyone that Hopper is still doing his life advice and relationship advice and video shoutouts and cutting promos on family members and friends and people you hate. Uh, He is definitely still doing all of that stuff. So if you would like a shout out, life advice, relationship advice, all that good stuff, essentially what you see these cameo folks doing, Hopper can do it for you. All you got to do is email him, chrishopper 16 wildcat with a K at gmail.com and then PayPal him 20 bucks to CC 303-88CC at yahoo.com, which is in the show description if you uh, didn't catch all that. When you email him, tell him exactly what you want in your video. That way he can shoot the video, get it recorded, and sent and shipped off to you and whatnot. So, yeah, take care of Hopper there. He'll, he will appreciate it. And also, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, subscribe to the channel, post a comment, all those pesky algorithms like that stuff. And lastly but not least, before I throw it to Doc to hit the tagline, if you're on that Twitter platform, because I refuse to call it X, 
you're on that Twitter platform, when I post the shows, please retweet it. I would appreciate it. If you don't pay for a blue check, you don't get as much engagement. You know, Elon's got this thing, pay to play. Um, I get it. You know, he's trying to monetize his digital platform. But Uh if you could help us out, if you could help us out and retweet the show whenever it's posted, that would be greatly appreciated. Doc, on that note, anything else before we get out of here and ride off into the sunset? I think we got to go, man. I agree. Well, why don't you hit the tagline and let's roll. Book it, bitch.